As much as life has changed over the last year, you're still pretty busy. So consider convenient COVID-19 testing from Quest. Get the same tests hospitals use without a doctor visit. Simply order online, select from drive through or at-home options, and get results sent securely to your phone or computer. It's a great fit for your busy life. With over 25 million COVID-19 tests processed, you can count on Quest. So order your test today at questcovid19.com. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Powder Donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name and price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. What's up, everyone? Freddy the Pizza Man here, host of the Pizza Man podcast. Now joining forces with ChristopherMedia.net. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, the Pizza Man podcast, and of course, find all the podcasts on ChristopherMedia.net. We talk Detroit sports, I bring on guests, uh, passions, opinions, uh, all for Detroit sports, and more. We even talk pizza, so thanks for tuning in, and uh, spread the word. Christopher Media, let's make some noise. Welcome to Beer Nuts, a weekly excursion into the world of craft beer. Brought to you by MichiganBeerGuide.com. And now, here are the Beer Nuts. All right. Welcome to Beer Nuts number 106. Hey, it's me day. That's what the show note said. Uh, I'm Chris, and with me from MichiganBeerGuide.com is JR. Hello, in the house. Oh, man. We're just going to go roll call style because there's like seven of us today. Uh, we got Doug out. Hey, how are you doing? Uncle Pete. Uncle Pete, Higgins Lake, Michigan, calling in. Oh, wow. Bragging that he's on vacation. Uh, let's see. Uh, damn, I lost my place. Uh, Ross? Ross and Durham here. Greg? Greg in Dearborn, Michigan. What's up? Yeah. SAK? I'm Grove Seal, Michigan. And last but not least, I, uh, Andrea, right? That's the last. I'm not skipping anybody. Andrea would be the final beer note with us tonight. Yeah. If I missed you, speak up. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, a lot on our plate tonight. Or on our palate, so to speak. Uh, there's seven of us, so we're just going to go right to Uncle Pete. He's got a beer quote for us. All righty. Well, I uh, found a quote that uh, our old buddy Willie Nelson had said, and he said there are more old drunks than there are old doctors. <laughs> He's not wrong. I think there's some truth in there. Uh, all right, so it's Mead. It, it's uh, I believe we're gonna let Andrea kick it off tonight because she she's been dubbed our our Mead expert, so to speak, and she's gonna start off by giving us a little bit of background about what Mead is. Mead is a general definition. Is just fermented honey and water. It is it it can be fermented spontaneously. It can have uh, it can be man-made. You can use yeast. There's also a lot of different varieties of meat. Um, there are different styles. Uh, a braggot would be a mead that is made from not only honey, but also a malted grain of some sort, usually barley. It is similar to like a, a beer honey, a beer mead hybrid, but it's they're both fermented together. That's one of the important things to remember about mead is you don't ever blend things at the end. It's all fermented together as far as um, the fermentable ingredients. Uh, there's also methogen, which we're not going to be drinking tonight, which is a spice mead. They're, the ones I've had were usually a, like a ginger or a nutmeg mead, and they're usually quite strong. And some people love them, and if you don't love them, you're probably not going to – you really are not going to love them. 
Um, a pyamint would be a fermented blend of honey specifically and grapes. So you ferment the grapes and the honey together, you come up with a pyamint. Melomels are the most common mead. They're what we all love to drink. They're uh, a fruit mead. You use, can use whole fruit, fruit juice. There's all sorts of different ways. Frozen fruit, um, tropical fruit. There's almost no limit with what you can do with the melomel. There's also a sizer, which is an apple juice, honey, fermented beverage. Those are the basic varieties of mead. Um, there's other words we use to talk about mead. Uh, we would talk about the sweetness of a mead. It could be dry like a wine or a semi-sweet or sweet, all the way to the of being cloyingly sweet mead. Uh, we, we look at carbonation just like in beer. You can have still, petulant, or sparkling, which... It, you don't want anything to be explosive. Or that's still a flaw in me, just like it is in beer. What is petulant? Petulant. Sorry. Andy, Andy, did you mention piment? Um, I do. I, I don't know if you I... Did, you did mention I did, I did. Yeah, piment is the grapes and honey. Yeah, okay, did, cool. Yeah, so you ferment the grapes and honey together. You not mix wine. Some people say mix wine and meat. That's not what you do. you got to ferment them together. Um, the petulance would be like a lightly bubbling, very, you know, sparkle, but not in the middle. Uh, your strength, you'd be a hydromel, would be a nice light mead. A standard mead would be in the middle. And then a stack mead would be your heavy duty meads. Um, hydromel is three and a half to seven and a half percent. Standard is seven and a half to 14 percent. And a stack is 14 to 18%. I think I've seen some that are actually 19% or 20, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I can't remember exactly. Um, as far as the other things go, there's what affects the mead will be the honey variety. There are so many different honey varieties. They affect color, taste, um, the smell. That I mean, there's some really crazy honeys, like a leatherwood honey is extremely strong. Um, you know, you can get a nice, really nice wildflower honey that is, can be almost anything because wildflower really means we don't know. Um, orange blossom honey is very common. It's pretty standard mead to make, uh, pretty standard honey to make mead with because it is pretty um, easy to, you know, it's um, a known thing. You don't have a lot of variety as far as you're not going to get some weird off character usually out of that. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, it's just normal bear stuff, aroma, flavor, mouthfeel. Um, you know, it can have some nice legs. It has smell. It just usually just Look at it the same way you do at any other beverage, um, uh, alcohol, beer, wine, and judge it on those characters. It, it will all stand up and they'll, they kind of all come along. They just have different names because it's different beverage, but it's really all the same standard. Well, in, in, if I may interject, Andrea, the interesting thing when following a judging card for mead, for example, mm -hmm. is a lot of... Um, references to beer terms but then there's also references to wine terms in yes. tannins and yes. the like so it's really stands out on its own when you're when you're sampling mead it's uh kind of like the best of both worlds between the beer and the wine it is and i mean it, you can uh, just like um a beer mead ages and it may, sometimes it ages wonderfully sometimes it ages horribly same with wine. You do eventually wear out some of your tannins and it uh, softens, I guess you could a lot of times with mead. But yeah, we, we, they do use a lot of wine terms when you talk about mead. It is technically a wine, at least in Michigan. It's legally a wine, so. They call it honey wine here, legally? Um, I, I'm not really sure if we have to call it honey wine here. I know it's technically a legally a wine here. I'm not sure if it's legally honey wine or legally wine. So... Earlier today, when I was looking for mead, I saw a bunch of bottles that had honey wine on them. Is that the same thing? Yes, it is. Oh, damn it. Well, <laughs> I, just, I just learned something. Well, what you, I mean, it's literally state by state and, um, you know, the alcohol, tobacco people what you have to have on a label and what each state considers it. Michigan considers it a wine, which means in Michigan we can ship it, um, you know, I guess, because we can ship wine in Michigan. 
but we couldn't consider it a beer because we can't ship in beer in Michigan, which is a good thing, I guess. That means we get better mead selection in Michigan. So all those well, little things. Well, and there's, there's, no, uh, there's no deposit That's true. On, mead, on mead bottles where there would be on beer bottles in Michigan. Sure. Even if it's sparkling. So is there any other, any other mead stuff anybody wants to know about? I thought it was pretty basic. Or should we? Yeah, that's a, is a that's a great overview of it. And, and um, you know, the sky's the limit on some of this stuff. I mean, some of those spice meads are are really off the charts, or they could just make you just wretch. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I'm excited to get into this a little bit uh, and hear what everybody else has has to offer. And you mentioned. Sparkling, I know some meads have some level of carbonation and many meads don't. Depend yeah. on, you know, in the process of fermentation, if the if the maker has degassed it or allowed it to ferment for long enough so that all the carbon dioxide can come out. Sometimes right. if it's a young mead and they prefer to have some bubbles, you, you bring it out early from the fermentation process and you get a sparkling mead. Yeah. And they're generally sessionable. Yes, it's really hard when you have a, um, a hugely sweet mead to get carbonation in it because there's so much fermentable sugar. Um, I, I guess from what I understand, and I, I was reading my complete mead maker today from by Ken Tram, it's just real, some really um, sweet meads are just really hard to ferment or to get, not to ferment, to um, carbonate. They're just hard to, impossible. So. I've been reading all about my, because I do not homebrew as much as you guys do. I just, you know, I'm on the sidelines. Well, I'm, trying. I'm making a mead now that's a blackberry raspberry mead, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, but I fully expect that that may end up not being very sweet. And, uh, you know, one of the approaches you can take to that is to blend it with an already fermented mead uh, that is a sweet mead. Because mm -hmm. if you add more honey, uh, the chances are you're going to end up fermenting that as well and yeah. still not end up with the sweetness you're looking for. So I think back sweetening, as they call it, you know, as an approach, if you want a sweet mead, I think you have to blend it with an already fermented sweet mead. Sure. I'll, I'll look into that while we, while we continue on with our review. Are you guys ready? Yeah, let's, uh, let's taste some meat. Okay, so we have Black Agnes by Shrams. Um, it is a sweet standard mead at 11%. It is made out of black currants, and this particular batch is batch 7, which was bottled in, well, I should say it was released about a year ago. So it should be past any, should be nice and yummy to drink. This is what say, it's going to be great. Um, it is very, very sweet, very jammy, very pretty color, like a garnet. Um, I, would, I can't really see through it as well as I expected to. It's pretty dense. Lovely. What do you guys think? It looks like if, you, uh, if you've ever made grape juice uh, from, constant, from frozen concentrate, and you pour out it, uh, pour it out, it is so thick. Um, if you, like I said, if, I was saying, if you make grape juice from concentrate, it uh, it has that same thickness, um, very opaque, very very uh, sweet, and very very tasty. Yeah, this is probably my favorite Shrams mead. Uh, I like the t term jammy the most because sweet sounds like it's too sweet, and it's not too sweet. It's just a characteristic of this. It's just loaded with fruit, bursting with flavor. I love the black currant in it. Just a, a absolutely delicious, probably, again, my favorite trans mead. Notwithstanding the coveted Heart of Darkness, <laughs> um, which uh, is on another level. These are just absolute fruit bombs. And it's like, you know, when you take, you know, 50 pounds of currants and you punch them into one small bottle, I'm not sure how... You get so much flavor, how it gets so concentrated there. But, I mean, it is so delicious. And uh, every time I have something like this, 
I'm glad that I didn't discover it when I was 17 or 18 years old because, <laughs> because it would have been so horribly dangerous. Uh, it's so tasty and uh, drinkable, but dangerous at uh, 11%. So in, in, uh, if I could just say for a minute, we're, we're talking about Shram's Meadery, and that's in Ferndale, Michigan, so all, all very local to us all. But in my, in my opinion, probably the gold standard of meads internationally, in a way. I mean, there's a few of them you could count on one hand, maybe into the second hand. That these are the best in the world, but Shram's always has to be up there with those. And we're very lucky to have that so close to us. Yeah, I think I was just. I think they're still considered the top meadery on uh, rate beer. And I'm not really sure what other websites have an actual accumulation of meat reviews, but I think they're still up there. They still have the top meats. Does Beer Advocate allow reviewing of meats yet or no? no? It would be interesting to talk about the uh, kind of the dichotomy or uh, you know, the dichotomy that exists between beer drinkers and wine drinkers and how I think beer drinkers tend to identify with mead more than beer more than wine drinkers identify with mead um i think if you were to go to a mead release you're far more likely to see beer beer geeks than wine geeks but i think at the same time mead is more appealing to women than uh entry and more women are getting into mead, i would say than and get into beer i think it, it it's considered uh, i wouldn't say more feminine but more approachable for women because it is a wine, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and, and I wonder if some of that is because of the, uh, the sweet side of it. The meats typically are um, on the sweeter side, although not all of them. But um, that, you know, a lot of sweet wines aren't very coveted by wine drinkers. Some are. You know, late harvests, things like that. But even that's a smaller portion of wine drinkers that, you know, they tend to go more towards dry, the drier side of things, the dry reds, the dry whites. Well, yeah, I always wondered why beer craft beer drinkers gravitated more to the meads. You know, uh, I, I use my dad, for example. I just visited him. He, he loves wine, but he also likes Quartz and dessert ones, cherries, which are, uh, I developed a desire for those through, uh, through him. And I'm not sure why it is wine snobs really don't approach the mead category for some reason. And that's just fine with me. That's more for us beer drinkers. So I'm just glad we're, uh, this is our first mead episode on beer nuts. So I guess we're mead nuts for one night. But there really is a, cor- uh, a correlation between craft beer drinkers and me. Um, and you go to almost any good craft beer share and you're likely to have uh, someone bring some mead. So, all right, uh, that's a pretty h- tough act to follow here. Um, Steve was going to go next, but I'm going to break out this just to break, just to switch things up. I'm going to, I have a can here of uh, Melovino Honey the Meddler which is a session mead, which is a double IPA style my mead with CTZ, Centennial, and Simcoe hops inspired by Pliny the Elder from Russian River Brewery. So now we're going to get a IPA session mead. That's 9%. So is this I don't think so. I think it's a mead that's made with hops. Um, Melovino makes traditional uh, meads. They make uh, mel- melomels. Your, your normal high percentage ABV are in the 14% range. Uh, but they also have a mead bar at the tap room in Vauxhall, New Jersey. And the mead bar does uh, have at any given time several session meads on tap. And I recently visited the meadery in New Jersey and picked uh, several 16 uh, ounce crawlers. So let's uh, get into this. Hang on one second. So it, this was uh, procured at the mead bar. 
Um, I, uh, a few weeks ago, hopefully it's held up. 9% ABV, and I'm going to crack it. It just looks like a 16-ounce can. Melavino is uh, one of my favorite meteries. Full disclosure, I do some marketing work for them. But uh, hang on just a second while we uh, finish our <laughs> Black Agnes and make some room for this. Go ahead, Steve. So a bracket is... Not, uh, a braggot, even if it has elements of beer, such as hops, it's only considered a braggot if you use barley. Right. It can be usually barley. It can be else. You guys maybe are better at that stuff than me. All right. Well, there's some carbonation. Give it a shot. I'm going to let Steve review it first. I'm going to pass. I'm going to let John review. Or beer. What's that? It tastes like a honey beer. It tastes like um, Here. Go ahead. Hold it up and can't hear you that It reminds me of Hop Slam, but not as intense. I mean, it's very, it has that sweet honey taste to it. Yeah. Do you guys agree? I agree. I, I, I'm i having a hard time believing this doesn't have any grain on it, but, I mean, it's nice. And I wouldn't say it's, it doesn't taste like this and piney. Yeah. I mean, it. maybe the hops are the same or inspired by that, but it's so, it has so much honey flavor in it, I can't even think of it that way, but I would say a nice honey IPA. I could see somebody gave this to me and said, this is a honey IPA. I wouldn't disagree with them. It definitely tastes like an IPA. Hopsam. It tastes like hop slime to me. I would have sat there uh, trying to come up with a good description, but any, anybody who, I would have sat there and uh, tried to come up with a good description, but anybody who's at hop slam could uh, drink this and you could, uh, that would be the best possible description, not a bunch of uh, descriptive phrases. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, it's really strong hop flavor, but then you got that honey backbone to it. Um, I'll ask uh, Sergio, the mead maker, I, I don't believe there's any barley in this though. I think it's just a lot of hops and this one's 9% too. So it's almost like drinking a double IPA. It's almost as strong as Hop Slam. So that's a great analogy. I wouldn't have thought of that, but yeah, it's kind of what it tastes like. <clears throat> the, certainly night and day from okay. a big uh, black currant to go into almost like an IPA uh, Hop Slam type flavor. I think it's interesting that the mead maker, in this case, the one you're reviewing now, but there's probably others, I'm sure, that, you know, they're, they're, Utilizing hops in the mead, that I find that interesting. It's like crossbreeding, and I don't know if that goes way back, you know, in the history of mead. But I, I just I like that. I like that uh, cross pollination. In fact, I know uh, at the liquor store I've seen hops being used in bourbons and stuff like that. And so I, I just find it interesting that there's some crossbreeding going on between beer and mead and diff using different ingredients. That's pretty cool. Well, I almost picked up uh, mead tonight. That's from, I believe, the brewery that you have there, Uncle Pete. It was an IPA-style mead, but I instead opted for something different because I yeah. didn't know that putting hops in mead was a thing. Apparently it is. All right, well, I know everybody else wants to drink something. I think we were going to go third here, but we're going to take a break here, and you can come back to us later. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Steve, Andrew, and I are all in one location. So we're going to stop hogging the show up. So who's next on the list? Is it Craig? I believe it is me. Okay, well, well, we'll defer to you and come back to us later. All right, for our so you guys hear me all right? Yes, sir. We did hear you. You there, Greg? Ah. Everybody hear me good? Yes. It's a little slow for me, but anyway, so I'll, I'll start talking here. My uh, my mead is from, still hear me? Yes, sir. Anybody? We got you. Come on, seriously? Okay, you can hear me. Yep, just talk right into your mic. Okay. My uh, my meat is from Sunshine Meadery in Grand. Uh, well, my meat is from Sunshine Meadery in Lowell, Michigan, which is about 16 miles to the east as the crow flies from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, it's called Snow Cherries, and uh, uh, from what I'm 
I know here it's a cherry cherry mead here with vanilla and cinnamon. Uh, poured in the glass here, it kind of resembles a uh, ro rosé wine. If anybody's pretty uh, familiar with that, pretty light color, light pink, maybe a little orange hue to it. Um, let's get the uh, smell on it here. Uh, it's uh, a lot of sweet cherries to it. Um, almost a medicinal smell, but uh, you get a little bit of that vanilla and that cinnamon. Um, just absolutely, uh, absolutely a fruity, spicy type uh, smell to it here. Uh, and the taste it. Oh, much more of the same. Um, you know, nice, uh, nice cherry flavor to it. Very, you know, creamy from that vanilla. And just a, a hint of that cinnamon. That they're talking about in here. Uh, this came in a uh, 500 milliliter uh, clear bottle. Bought it at Siciliano's Ciso, Market in Grand Rapids. I think I bought it about, about a year and a half ago uh, when I was over there for KBS week. And been sitting nicely in my cellar ever since. So uh, I, think, I believe Sunshine's been around for about a couple of years now. Um, I really don't believe they make a lot of a lot of uh, meads. I think four or five meads right now in their lineup. But uh, this is certainly a uh, fantastic offering from them. I would certainly seek it out. It certainly wasn't too expensive. I think I paid, you know, no more than eighteen dollars for. Um, it's ten percent ABV and uh, yeah, really good meadery, really good mead, and uh, check it out. Oh, if you're especially over there on the west side of the state, there, I don't believe it comes over here, over here for us for the uh, Detroit crew. But uh, I was glad I was able to find this over there in Grand Rapids. All right, so dugout, I believe you are up next, sir. Okay, well, I have a, a mead that is called Capsumel, um, and is from the Fat Friars Meadery in newcastle maine and um i had stopped in there last year when i was on vacation in maine and it was actually just sort of found it by some wooden signs tacked to the road that says metery and it was they were just sort of spray painted and um kept following these signs down in one long driveway to another long driveway get to a house and then you had to follow some more signs down in the basement of this house so pretty unique um uh way to find a place and uh it was located in newcastle there was another brewery that we had visited that day called oxbow and i think we had some of the oxbow beer on our anniversary show i don't think we reviewed it i think we just drank it but um uh anyways i digress so fat fryers meadery you know one person operation i think he was in um he was off painting painting a barn or something and his wife started to give us the tour or not really much of a tour it's just a sampling in, in a room and um I really enjoyed these meads. They were they were really nicely done. There was a cherry mead. They were all a little bit on the sweet side. This this one in particular, Capsumel. Um, if you're familiar with capsaicin, it's the heat of the pepper, and uh, this is a uh, chili chili pepper infused mead. Um, it's got a beautiful golden clarity to it. There's no con there's no carbonation of it. Um, it's uh, it's a little touch on the sweet side, but that's perfect for what this is. It's got um, sort of the sweet hot going for it, and um, that first sip, that the pepper is there, and um, it's more of a like a dry pepper flake, like something you'd put on your pizza. That's the type of heat. You don't get an actual flavor of pepper. It's just from the heat. And um, as you sip it, it builds because the sweet sort of hangs on your tongue, which hangs on the pepper. Which So as you drink this, it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter, but only to a point. And, I mean, it's not like ghost pepper hot, but... It's just, um, it's an interesting experience. The taste is beautiful. 
Um, it's just a basic, straight up honey wine mead with with heat. And um, I mean, hats off to this guy for doing all this stuff. And and um, he he works hard at it, and and it and it shows. I mean, it's just really nice drinking. You're not going to find it in the grocery store. I don't know if he even has distribution on it. I think he hand delivers everything he sells. Might have a few restaurants, things like that. But if you're ever in that neck of the woods of Maine, Newcastle's up north of uh, Portland, and um, beautiful area, great place to vacation. Uh, I would definitely seek the place out. I mean, a little tough to find, but if you can find Oxbow Brewery, um, then you can find Fat Friars. So. <clears throat> hey Doug, uh, didn't you uh, make a pepper infused mead a couple of years ago? No, I made a raspberry mead, and um, there's still quite a few bottles left. Um, some of the members of my family like it. It's too acidic for my taste, um, and it was pretty hot. You know, it came out like the 14, 15 percent. And uh, so I just decided to stick it away in the cellar and just see. I pulled the bottle out last year, um, starting to mellow out a little bit, uh, but still, it was done with a it was done with a kit from Adventures in Home Brewing, and um, I think it was just really there was so much uh, citric acid or um, additive that went into it that. I don't know that there's any way that's ever going to overcome that. All right. So I guess it's my turn. I mean, I'm not trying to say it sucks, but because it doesn't suck, but it's just, it's not for everyone. (laughs) All right. So uh, moving on with my select band, there's eight of us. We just got to just keep doing this and, and keep moving. Uh, my selection is from Bean Nectar, I believe another, uh, you guys want to help me out here? I, is, is this another revered Michigan meadery here? Uh, it seems like it's uh, a, a name I hear frequently when the name, uh, when the mead is brought up. Yeah, definitely. It's, a, it's a, the other Ferndale meadery. So you've got Shrams and you've got Bean Nectar, both in... Well, they're sort of opposite ends of Ferndale, but yes, they do great things over there. Both excellent. <laughs> yeah, this is called apple pie, P-I, you know, like the math pie. Um, <laughs> and I could tell you, I mean, when I popped this thing open, I could smell apples in the studio, uh, and then you sniff this thing. I mean, it it, it smells like fall. I mean, it's, we're, we're recording August 1st, uh, only about a month or so, maybe, maybe, maybe six weeks. I mean, it's, it's going to be autumn around here. I mean, in this, uh, and, and our favorite beer flavor will be showing up once again, gentlemen. But, I mean, I'm smelling apples, I'm smelling <laughs> cinnamon, I'm smelling, you know, all, all of the, the typical spices that go with it 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 smells like an apple pie kind of too uh it's got little tiny bubbles that are clinging to the side of the glass here but it's not effervescent if that makes any sense to you guys it's tasting it it's definitely it's thicker than beer it's it's got like a a, it's not a hefty mouthfeel but it it's not watery i know i just covered a huge spectrum there but it's it's kind of got a almost kind of like a creaminess to it, and man, and too this comes in at fourteen percent ABV, and this tastes just like it smells. Uh, sweet at the beginning, you're getting the the apple, and then at the end, you're tasting the nutmeg and the cinnamon. This is like drinking an apple pie, but a far more delicious than any apple pie that you've ever had. And I can see this being very dangerous on a fall night or maybe on a day like, I don't know, Halloween. But apple pie, bean nectar, wow. And I have a whole bottle just for me. So if I go sloppy towards the end of the podcast, guys, sorry. (laughs) 
And we are very fortunate to have two excellent meters. Uh, we are very, very close. Uh, I, uh, some lists will also include Kunin. Uh, obviously, they're known for their beer, but they do have some very well thought of meads. Um, you know, especially in Ferndale, it's, it's odd because Shrams is a very serious meadery. I mean, it's, if you go to the tap room, it is, you know, crystal goblets and, you know, it's very, very refined. And then Bean Nectar is more of the kind of the goofy, uh, you know, they do brew a bunch of different things. They try different things. I uh, have some very offbeat selections, offbeat combinations. They make meat slushies. You want the golfers? Call the golfers. Call the golfers. Uh, you know, they just, they're far more, they're far less serious than Shram. But their stuff is very, very tasty as well. They have, uh, you know, they have some misses, uh, but they have a lot of hits as well. Zombie yeah, there's killer, zombie, there's zombie the dude zombie drug. killer. Yeah, we've we've reviewed zombie killer. I believe I put it in on the cider episode, and that was man, got to be about an episode four or five somewhere way back when. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, zombie killer on draft is just man, that's cherry Kool Aid. It is so good. One of my absolute favorites is uh, Tuco style freakout. Which is gummy mead with lime. It's, I mean, that's absolutely killer, and it's perfect for the start of here too. Well, I had like everything you guys just mentioned in my hand at some point today. I passed it all up because well, I didn't and know yeah, honey I'm wine a, was mead. That's why I'm glad you mentioned. Helped. I'm glad you mentioned Coonan on mead um, because their their mead is. Um, really distinctive and totally different from the other two like it's um it's not so sweet and they have some crazy combinations the rose petal beads and they have one in particular which is bourbon barrel aged french toast so they bourbon barrel aged mead and uh boy that mead is just killer and i think we might have even reviewed that one on the show all right we'll Speaking of reviewing, I believe Ross. Okay. It's your turn. So, right. if I can interject one time, I, we did a, a review of the French toast meat on a was yeah. it a Wales or was it an anniversary? Hundred. Um, no. Yeah. You guys. No, because Andrea, it, they include supposedly pecans in the French toast meat. You know, to go along with French toast, and Andrea cannot drink it. So even though we really look forward to it. We uh, She sent it over for, I don't know if it was a Wales episode or what it was, but anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. That was the episode we did it. It was, uh, we've done two episodes at my house, and that was the first of the, of the two episodes that we did where we reviewed the French toast. All right, so Ross... Okay, well, I'm going to preface everything by saying I'm not um, a very experienced mead person at all. I think uh, everybody knows from what I have tended to review on here, I like uh, sweet uh, stouts mostly. But on the other end of the spectrum, I like really dry ciders. Um, and the the only meads I've ever had at or have been at shares and for the most part have been on the really sweet end of things. So I've always wondered how I was going to, you know, why, how I would drink more than a couple ounces of them. They tasted nice, but it was, it was on the end of, it was on the edge of being so sweet that I really wouldn't want that much of it. Um, so I went to my local meadery, uh, which I hadn't had time to get to before. They have, uh, it's a small place. They have kind of limited hours. They're only open on like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And, um, but, uh, I went, uh, this past Saturday to get ready for the show. And I, uh, I did a full tasting of all the meads there. And I discovered to my surprise that, Hey, most of the meads were either dry or semi sweet. And I really liked everything that I had there. So I bought a couple bottles of things to bring home. Um, the, the one I'm going to try here is the, or, or uh, review is the uh, strawberry mead. 
that I got. Um, uh, reading the the little bit on the label, it's uh, um, strawberry season captured in the glass. Our strawberry mead features local berries picked at the peak of sunshine and freshness. We ferment the berries with in North Carolina wildflower honey. The result is breathing in the strawberry field and sipping in the sunshine. So this was all completely North uh, North Carolina strawberries, North Carolina honey. She has a supplier where she gets about a, I think she said about a third of her honey maybe um, from Eastern North Carolina. Uh, obviously that's not all the honey she gets to make mead, but for some of her mead, she makes sure to make sure that all of the ingredients are North Carolina ingredients. Um, so pouring it out, um, it's got a slight orange pink issue, um, no carbonation or anything visible. Um, the smell, there's definitely a nice strawberry smell to it. It's a nice, light, not overpowering smell. And um, that's what I, when I first smelled it, I thought, okay, here we go. It's going to be something relatively sweet. But then it just really has a nice, light, dry um, feel to it uh, and taste. Um, the strawberry taste really sticks around a little bit, it lingers. Um, it's, actually, it says that in the description as well. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really excited about this style of mead because, like I said, I was very inexperienced with meads, and I'd always had these very heavy, full, very sweet meads that, were, that showed up at shares a lot of the time. And this is more to, to what I want uh, in, a, in this kind of drink, the nice and, nice and dry and light. Um, and that smell, it's got, it's got this really awesome strawberry smell to it. Mm. So, um, at the mediary, um, I got to talk to the owner and brewer, um, Diane, um, who really, mead is her passion. So I guess it's kind of like the guy that we were, you were talking about earlier where you had ended up in his house. Um, she uh, she took a trip uh, to like Alaska and was visiting her sister apparently, and um, and she was walking through a field of uh, of a flower called uh, uh, what, what the heck was it fireweed, and um, as part of a, her, their trip they were hiking and then later on that day they went to a meadery called fire fire meadery, a ring of fire meadery, and um, and she was exposed to mead made from those flowers, basically. And, uh, and it really turned her on and it gave her a connection to, to mead and, and to, you know, the, the whole environment, the natural aspect of it. And she was a home brewer. So when she came home, she started making mead after that experience. And so in talking to her, she has a real passion for it. And, and, um, it was, it was very interesting getting all the details of, mead making from her and, and where she was sourcing all of her ingredients from. Um, this is definitely something I'm going to keep, uh, keep in touch with from here on out. Um, I bought this and I bought a, uh, a spiced apple sizer that was really good. I think we covered sizer as a category earlier. Um, and I was always, and I was really surprised by a, uh, a lavender mead she had. Where when I smelled it, I thought, wow, this was overwhelming, at least to me, as far as a lavender. But the taste itself really evened out and was really nice. And I hadn't experienced that either. That was a semi-sweet. So nothing nothing that she made was the over-the-top sweet needs that I had had at Shares. So I was really excited to, to find that this was – there were a lot of needs out there that were my style of dry. Um, and – this strawberry is one of them. It's really good. And that's Honey Girl Meadery in Durham. So many meaderies. I didn't even know they were a thing until like a couple of years ago. So from North Carolina, I believe Uncle Pete, it is your turn, I think. All right. Like thanks seven for Seven of us, isn't it? <laughs> well, I've got one here from a meadery called Superior Lakes. I... Uh, I believe it says here they're in Harrison Township, Michigan, which I think is along the shores of Lake St. Clair. And uh, this is called Blueberry Melody. It's uh, 
a honey wine made from about a third blueberries and two thirds honey. Uh, when I pour it, it definitely comes up like a uh, a nice light purplish color. I would kind of equate it to say I took a a deep red wine like a Zinfandel or something and or a Cab and watered it down and you could see through it it's it's very light colored but it's purplish of course the blueberries are lending that bluish purplish color the aroma i mean i don't get a lot of complexity i i, I search for it on the nose and in the, in the uh, you know when i'm when i'm sniffing my beers or the other beverages that we review and i don't get a lot of complexity it's just a straight up i i smell honey and I smell blueberries. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, is it flowers? No. It's fruit? Yes. It's sweet smelling? Yes. Um, but it's very pleasant, very aromatic. This is a 14% ABV, by the way. And uh, let's have a taste. Yeah, very smooth. Kind of a creamy mouthfeel. It has uh, a great sweetness up front. Uh, blueberries uh, really come on after the initial um, shot of honey and sweetness from the honey that you get. And then the blueberry and the fruit takes over. And then for me, it's followed by a little bit of heat as far as the alcohol goes. It's a very warming uh, alcohol flash off the palate. I also should have met. I also should have mentioned that um, it's not bubbling. I think Chris, you mentioned this with, with your uh, mead, but when I look at the surface of the glass on the inside, there are small bubbles forming and sticking to the surface of the glass. So it's not fizzy, but I can see that there is some carbonation in there, and even on, on the mouthfeel, I can sense the carbonation. Let me read uh, uh, just a quick uh, blurb here from the uh, Superior Lakes website. This was a limited release. Uh, this is Michigan blueberries and star thistle basswood honey. It must be a, a locally sourced, uh, you know, honey from uh, wherever they've got this uh, star thistle basswood and it's full of fresh blueberries and honey. It's an excellent sipping mead that's great for sharing. Uh, the quote on the bottle says, Sing the song of summer all year long with this wonderful mead. And it uh, goes on to mention here that uh, in a, a few years ago, 2013, 2014, uh, they've won a couple of medals, a bronze medal in the Eastern International Wine Competition a silver medal in the Finger Lakes International Wine Competition, and then a silver medal in the Michigan Mead Cup. So it's a very good I love blueberries. I'm up north in northern Michigan right now, and um, I wish I could stay longer as a blueberry picking, uh, wild blueberry pick. I'm missing the pear. You just want to stay It's on some of the wood. You're bound to find some some blueberries. Um, but I'm a fan. I like it. And I wish uh, that uh, some of you guys and gals were here with me to share. I, I could use the support because my day was filled already with a, a winery visit, a cidery visit, a brewery, and a brew pub. And uh, I'm on the tail end of a long Boy. drinking day here. And so this is this is a great nightcap uh to settle me down and get me ready for night night <laughs> but yeah. cheers everybody thanks for letting me share this one with you cheers fantastic cheers so i think let's see one two three four five six, I, I think jr this is where we come back to you guys all right, back to the island. Boy, so many great meads that we've, uh, man, I've uh, really uh, piqued my interest on a lot of these reviews. 
going to have to try some of the ones that we've heard from, especially that, uh, that one down in North Carolina, Ross. That sounds really good, as they all did. Um, but I'm just glad that we finally got around to doing the meat episode. Uh, uh, the whole point of doing this meat episode is meat day is always the first Saturday in August. And that's coming up by the time this episode's released. It's released um, on that weekend. There are a lot of festivities going on, especially in eastern Michigan, where, uh, you know, a lot of the big meaderies are. There's a huge festival uh, at Trams uh, Mead Day, um, and there's one at Bee Nectar with several breweries and other meaderies, um, some cider places uh, all getting together to... to you know, I, I should be pouring uh, some Melovino Saturday at uh, Bee Nectar. But uh, it's just, uh, you know, once a year you celebrate these uh, these great libations. So we're going to close this out with a brand new meadery that's just o- opening. Their tap room actually isn't even open yet, but uh, they have received their license. And I believe this is their first re- release since they were legal to sell. Um I actually got a membership of this. Not their first release, their first legal release. Well, uh, they legally could give it away, but now they actually can sell it and make a profit. But Four Fires Meadery in Maumee, Ohio, just outside of Toledo. Um, and their first release, they had two re- two two meads they released. And the one I'm going to be tasting is called Slow Jams. It's a blackberry mead um, with Pinot Chilo Sugar. Um and they also had a one called Marzipan, uh, Marzipan's Labyrinth, which uh, when I mentioned that to Doug out, he was real excited about. Um, I don't have that one to taste tonight, but uh, perhaps we'll be reviewing it on a future episode because he's real excited about trying that one. So let's just go right into our slow jams here. I've already opened the bottle, uh, but I have, I have waited to take a sip, so... Um, here, Steve, why don't you pour yourself some? So, uh, again, four flyers, four fires metery slow jams. It's 14% ABV. Um, a rich and decadent mead made with blackberries and peanut and chilo sugar, finishing pitch black, teeming with tannic blackberry and caramelized sugar. This mead is the liquid embodiment of soul and Motown music. So if you look on the... The label for this, it's got a really cool uh, picture of like a jazz singer holding a microphone, wearing a purple uh, suit, um, pretty cool little cartoon looking thing. Um, but let's get down to business and taste the mead now. Uh, I'm holding it up, it's maybe a slightly lighter in color than the Agnes was, but not too far off. Um, you know, smells nice and fruity uh, uh, on the aroma. A lot of fruit, nice flavor to it. Not maybe not quite as sweet as the Agnes was, and maybe not quite as fruit filled. Very unfair to to compare this to Black Agnes, which is a uh, you know, one of the icons of, in the industry. But uh, for these guys, their first release, I, th- I I think it's really really. I love Blackberry first of all, and they've done this. Uh, they've they've done a great job with this. Uh, it, it's it is jammy, maybe not as jammy as uh, I, I get. A, I get like a little Concord grape in this, almost like if you were going to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, this would be the grape side. Although it is blackberry, um, it's kind of like a blackberry slash Concord grape flavor to me. I don't know. Are you getting that, Steve? And what's your opinion? I'm sorry, it was I missed out. Uh, uh, I'm just saying no. I was just saying that the uh, I get almost a little Concord grape in this. Um, you know, I, I love blackberries, and I, I taste the blackberry, but I also, it's almost like there's a little conquered grape. Maybe it's just a jamminess that reminds me of that. But At the beginning, it's very, very sweet. Um, I like the mouthfeel. At the end, I'm catching a little bit of a, something, maybe it's the other meads I've had tonight, but uh, there's something I'm, I'm catching that uh, I'm not, I'm not into yet, but uh I don't know if it's you say it was just released, Sean. I'm not sure if it's something that will age out. But like I said, it starts off really, really tasty, and then I find something at the end that I'm not a big fan of. Let me see what Andrea likes. I I, I really need another drink before I tell you what I think. I only have one. You know what? It, uh, okay, I'm going to tell you what I think it is. 
or what I what I'm feeling. Um, you know how you eat a grape or a blackberry or something with a seed, and you get the seed taste. I think at the end, it tastes like I'm eating a grape seed. That little bitterness, and it, you know, I guess you could call it a tannin. If you want to call it a tannin, it maybe it is a tannin, but it tastes to me like I'm eating a fruit, but also the seed when you. So, you know, I mean, maybe if you had a mashed fruit, you get some of that seed flavor in there, or if you had a liquid, like a juice, you maybe not eat as much, but I guess that's what I'm thinking that taste is. There's definitely something there that's not just blackberry. I agree. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, tannin, I think, is the key word there. You know, there is a little bit of uh, tannin uh, bitterness at the end, which... Uh, I, I, w- I, didn't, I wouldn't have thought to say the seeds, but now that you mentioned it, I've taken another sip, and I get it. So, um, yeah. I'm looking, on untapped, I'm looking on untapped here, and it looks like they have, like, Slow Jams is kind of their catch-all, and they, it looks like they do a cherry, uh, a black currant, a blackberry. Um, it certainly would be interesting to see what, uh, what these various flavors are alongside each other. Well, yeah, just uh, I mean, take it for what it's take it for what it's worth on the uh, untapped, but it, it's got a four point five six, so it is an enjoyable uh, flavor to it. Um, certainly not a you know I'm not suggesting it's on the level of Black Agnes, but it's, you know those who uh, try this enjoy it. Um, yeah, so don't let the uh, that and that uh, finishing bitterness uh, scare you off if you haven't had it. Because uh, I'm really enjoying it, and I think uh, I think for their first uh, try, I mean, uh, you know, they're they're off to a good start. Um, also, looking forward to trying that marzipan one. So, um, so look for these guys. Uh, you know, right now I believe it's all members only. Uh, I got a membership. Uh, just took a. Took a chance and figured I had a new local meadery. I'd try it out, and uh, I haven't been too disappointed lately. And I'm um, excited to see what they put out forthcoming. I know they have a, a, a coffee one coming out, Shogun Barista, that I have a couple bottles of that coming. So, uh, and then they have a, a strawberry vanilla one in the works too. So, good to see. So, uh, one of the things we're seeing is uh, just like the craft beer boom meadery. Meteries uh, are increasing. A lot more meteries are opening, and that's uh, a really cool thing. So this is a uh, category that is not going away. It's uh, going to emerge. Uh, I was at a chair in New Orleans last weekend, and uh, Andy touched on this. A lot of the ladies at the chair were real excited when somebody opened up a bottle of mead because, uh, you know, it's very approachable and uh uh, my great meads were enjoyed. Uh, friend Toby bought, brought three different ones that were uh, enjoyed, and mead that was aged in four rooms. Oh, anybody else there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, this um, connection is crazy. There? Oh, <laughs> I've been talking, and I didn't have my mute button off. No. Yeah, we lost them. Um, but there's been a few uh, yeah. moments. There's been a few moments on this call where it's gone. Like Uncle Pete, when you were talking, it went into slow motion mode, and it was it, it picked up everything you were saying, but it was so slow and drawn out. And I've been that just I don't know if anybody else was getting that either. I thought that was maybe just me, but then huh. Jr. started doing it, and then. Yeah, I think it's them. <laughs> well, calling them back. See if we can get yeah. them back on. Yep. So, shame we didn't put any um, Sellerman stuff in oh. here. I mean, they certainly there we go. a shout out, you know. JR. Oh, nope. Nope. that didn't last long. Yeah, he's connected. Can you hear us, Man. Jr.? How long were we disconnected for? Uh, we lost you in the middle of your bottle share story, Jr. Oh, so not too long. Correct. Okay, you want me to just pick up from there, or I'll wrap it up quickly. 
Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah. So going back to, you know, I was in New Orleans this weekend for a bottle share, and it was uh, a lot of the ladies at the chair found the meads very approachable. And whenever somebody opened the mead, a lot of people got excited, and you know, men and women alike were uh, watching across the room. Oh, mead's opening up. Let's try that. So really glad to see mead is growing in popularity. A lot of new meadery. And uh, really looking uh, forward to, to some new styles. All right. Well, is that it? Do, do we have anything else on mead? There was a shameless plug that John was putting in. I should do shameless from you know, um, you know, talking about going to their tap room in New Jersey. And I also wanted to say that, you know, they do distribute in Michigan. Um, I think their meads are a nice price point. Um, as much as I enjoy shrams, they are fairly expensive relative to other meads. And Melovino is certainly a quality mead and at, at a nice price. Thanks for that shameless plug. I'll continue on to invite anybody for the New Jersey. Seek out uh, the meadery uh, and go to the mead bar. We've got several uh, session uh, meads on tap. Um, and look, ask for Sergio and say hi to him. He's one of the great guy, the mead maker there. He's also president of the American Mead Makers Association. So when in Jersey or New York City, you know, try to get over to the meadery and, and try these guys out. And not, you know, pick some up on the shelf. Look for Murder of Crows, Blackberry Mead with Peppercorns, or Midnight Jack, uh, their dark fruited mead, and you won't be disappointed. There, that's the end of my shameless plug for Melovino. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let's let's plug a couple more places. I mean, we live in what was called the Mead Trilogy, which was originally B Nectar. Shrams and Kunin, but then there's also Dragon Mead, hence the name. They do some pretty good meads from time to time. And then uh, Cellarman's over in um, Hazel Park. I mean, just love those guys to death. And, you know, what a cool, chill place where you can go drink session meads and live heavy metal music. That's pretty cool. Um, and then the I, uh, word of the grapevine is there's another new meadery opening in, I believe it's either Madison Heights or Hazel Park, but it's also on John R. And um, uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself and say any names or anything like that in case, you know, something happens. But um, the me maker is phenomenal. It, it just incredible incredible meads and these are on the scale of shrams um i think it, it definitely once it, they're open it'll be such a welcome um addition to uh the mead community here in southeastern michigan but man we live in a great spot when it comes to mead that is for sure probably the biggest concentration of high quality meaderies in the whole world is right here in the detroit area <clears throat> well, I'm sure I'll probably never measure up to the big boys and these great ones around here, but just stay tuned, guys. In a few months, you'll have one from Uncle Pete's home brewery, my first one. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I, put 15. I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, I've been brewing beer for so long, and finally, after all this time, I decided to throw a mead together and got myself a kit and I got some uh, blackberry and raspberry puree and uh, it's been in the fermenter about three weeks now and I'm going to let it go for a few months um, but would love I got seven and a half pounds I had 15 pounds of honey and uh, seven and a half pounds is going to make quite a few bottles of mead so uh, all of y'all are on the list I would love to share it with you so, you know, when you think about 15 pounds of meat or a honey, honey's not that cheap, really. Right. You know, so when you're talking 15 pounds, you got a couple bucks invested into this stuff. So when you look at a bottle of mead, the cost of a bottle of mead 
and you see a $20 price tag or you see a $30 price tag, it's well warranted. I mean, that's that's the cost of the ingredients that go into it. So, you know, yeah. don't balk at something, it, you know, a $5 bottle of meat is going to probably not be very good, you know. So, right. you know, when you're looking at something like that or if you're looking to purchase it, you know, expect to pay 20 to $30 for a quality bottle of meat. That's right, yep. Yeah. It's, 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 I, I put it up there with like ice wine. If you look at bottles of ice wine, you know, I think it's just the extra, uh, you know, it, it's, the, I don't know if it's a lot of extra effort. I mean, nature takes care of the grapes for the ice wine. <clears throat> and, but yeah, the cost me, of honey, cost of honey is very high. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but, you know, me, Meat gives you a different kind of buzz, aside from beer or aside from wine. I think it's very unique. It just, um, I don't know how to explain it. I, I certainly get a lot mellower off of that. And I know that I've been drinking mead, and I love the fact that I could just get that mead glow about <laughs> me. That's so awesome, you know? <laughs> I'm going to keep my eye on you now. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, come on, man. <laughs> right? I mean, it's a different buzz than drinking a beer. You yeah, need a little more that. experience. Well, happy me day, everybody. Cheers. All right. Well, such concludes our me day episode. Everybody enjoy re- responsibly. Uh... Find yourself a good mead, and anybody has any closing comments before we go to Mexico City? All right, well, everybody, uh, uh, Chris, do your tweets and this and that, and then we'll go to Mexico. (coughs) Uh, Chris said, sign off without him. He had the reboot. Yeah, Chris is not on. Okay, well, I guess then I'll say, uh, mine has said, on Twitter at Beer Nuts Podcast, Instagram at Beer Nuts Podcast. You can find me at, at Michigan Beer Guy, and you can go to MichiganBeerGuy.com to find. I actually uh, almost finished a big article on the last two weeks I spent down south, all the beer adventures I had uh, in multiple cities, and uh, it was a great time. I discovered some new, new, uh, breweries made some new friends and drank some great beer so uh that's about it for me so uh as they say in old mexico city if you like this show please tell a friend Please follow us on Twitter and like and share us on Facebook by searching for Christopher Media. You can subscribe to all ChristopherMedia.net shows for free on ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate and comment on all your favorite Christopher Media shows. Thank you in advance for supporting Christopher Media by clicking on the PayPal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net and thank you for listening. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Imagine the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet, all in one place. Go ahead. Dare to stream with Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. A different future starts with you. That's why GoDaddy does more than help you find a name. You can create, sell, and get found online so any small business can drive change or build an empire. Because old ideas aren't cutting it anymore. This new year, we need a new generation of thinking, your way of thinking. So whatever you have in mind that will help make a different future, find everything you need to get started at GoDaddy.com. Because the future isn't decided yet. It's still ours to win. Start different at GoDaddy.com.